is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Okay, we're back. We're live. I'm Jay Fidel. It's Monday morning. It's the start of our broadcast day today and week. And uh, we're doing community matters, but uh, today the community is not necessarily Hawaii Day, uh, although it may be involved later. <laughs> today the community is the community of Puerto Rico. Okay, and my co-host for this show is, of course, Marsha Joyner, who follows things around the world and especially all over this country. Yes, thank you for inviting me. And I do, I do follow things all over the world because we are part of the world. Mm -hmm. And it's nice for people of Hawaii to know that different parts of the uh, world, and especially other islands. Yeah. And our special host to uh, look into what's going on in Puerto Rico on the ground is Nancy Wizard, and uh, she is with the Puerto Rican Heritage Society here in Hawaii. Welcome to the show, Nancy. Thank you so much for having yeah, me. Yeah, great to have you. So, uh, what is the Puerto Rican Heritage Society? What is that? Uh, the Puerto Rican Heritage Society started um, many years ago. So, and, because um, it was a whole wave of immigrants from Puerto Rico yes. in about 1910 or so. Exactly, and it was, it was, it's very ironic because it was the same reason that brought the Puerto Ricans here back in the 1900s. Um, in, I believe it was 1898, there was a hurricane that devastated oh, the that island. Right? It was only a category three, but... Um, in those days, they didn't have climate change. And <laughs> it's all different now. And it was um, also, they didn't have the structures that now we have. Um, so it was a lot of devastation, and lucky for them, there were recruiters that basically went to Puerto Rico and offered jobs, and so they moved here. Um, that generation to work at the plantation fields. And so this is a society that helps perpetuate the memory of the Puerto Ricans, the culture that came here to Hawaii many years ago. Interesting. And they, and they were, uh, they followed the uh, Portuguese Lunas, didn't they? Yes. They were, they were Lunas, I think, a lot of them, yeah? Uh, yes, and there were many other um, ethnic groups that came to work, but yes, they were one of the latter ones, and they were brought, um, it was entire families. It wasn't yeah. just single, yeah. um, so um, they really got along with the, they had a lot of things in common with the Filipino ethnic group, and so, um, so there's a lot of people here in Hawaii that have Puerto Rican ancestry, and they yeah. might not really realize it. Yeah, yeah, that's, well that's I, interesting. I think one of the interesting things for our local audience is that in 1898, mm -hmm. America decided they wanted the Philippines just like they wanted Hawaii at exactly the same time. So that was all a part of that. Well, it was manifest destiny. And a, a part was, of this Spanish-American war. Big war. Big war. I mean, and, mm -hmm. and for, and and for the purpose of manifest of, destiny. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so that's when they took Guam and Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico yes. and uh, Hawaii mm -hmm. and several other. Yeah, should yeah. have taken Cuba, too. I'm only kidding. <laughs> Anyway, so let's talk about it. Now, when's the last time you were in Puerto Rico? Um, actually, it's been four years. Yeah. So I moved here 28 years ago. And so um, my parents were military, and I decided to stay. And so the reason why I decided to stay is because I love Hawaii. And um, I, it was easier for me to stay here with the mode of transportation. I could just be a 19-year-old and make it on my own. <laughs> I stayed on a six-month trial, and 28 years later, I'm still here. Um, <laughs> But uh, I, it took a while before I started going back, and then a few years ago I decided that I wasn't going to let five years go back without going. So the past two times that I've gone, I've taken my children, and I have three um, grown children. They're 18 and 21, three of them, twins. And so um, last time we went, the next time we go, it's going to be a complete different be uh, difference because um, of this devastation of the hurricane. Um, just all the places that we went are going to be so, extremely... So you've been following the news, of course, on what's going yes. on in Puerto Rico, yes. and you have friends and family there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's take a quick look at uh, some of the news you've been following, some of the photos that, that you've seen, just to get a, a general idea about mm -hmm. the level of devastation. Yeah. Yes. Oh, my. Yes. And as you can see, people of all ages are helping. They're making... Um, Is that where they're drinking... Um, so in Puerto Rico, we didn't have leptospirosis like we have in Hawaii, 
And so now they're having that problem, and so people are being warned about this bacteria that can be deadly, and with the problem of um, the antibiotics and the hospitals not having the supplies, um, the appropriate supplies, uh, it's, it's becoming a, a health threat. Mm. And uh, here is the dam in Guajataca, it looks like. Um, it's uh, pretty old, I guess, and um, so uh, this, this looks like oh, what's happening on the west side right now. And they, yeah, that was uh, a road once. Yes. Yeah. So transportation, uh, talking about the road, transportation of provisions will be very difficult if yeah. there is no roads. Yeah. Um, it's not that they're just holding it, right? And here you see, um, looks like a warehouse and just a complete mess. Um, and uh, everybody, like I said, of all ages helping. Um, I have a dirty house right now, and I sometimes I think, oh, I don't know where to start. So can you imagine if you have an tr entire tree blocking your driveway? Or um, So as you can see, you start working little by little. Um, in my hometown, uh, in an area, in La Sierra, in Aibonito, 60 people were homeless. And here's a good example of how you could lose even if you have a cement home, um, the streets again, the Look transportation. Look at that road. Yeah, that road is not it's really missing. passable. So yeah. the provisions might be stuck at the warehouse, and so there's got to be a little creativity in bringing the provisions to the inner uh, towns. Yes. Um, oh. Again, oh. what a mess. Um, but as you notice, the, the roof in these houses, uh, they could have been just completely blown off. A lot of people have water tanks there, uh, so that could have been also gone. Yeah. And uh, yes, and right now they have very bad weather. Um, Still. Yes, there is. Uh, yeah, we when we a asked right uh, for a weather report this morning, there were flash flood warnings in Puerto oh, Rico so, right now, so. in San Juan specifically. Oh. Yeah. Yes. And here yeah. we have right now the need is for. Um, generators, and especially to help people with diabetes keep their medications refrigerated. Uh, little things that we don't think about. What about oxygen? Um, because you need a generator to, exactly. to power oxygen. Yes, a lot of people that are on oxygen tanks and the dia uh, people with diabetes were the first ones to notice. Do you know where that might be? I'm not sure. I'm so sorry. It looks like it's a coastline. It's a coastline, yeah. And, uh, but it's every town, um, uh, my friend Dr. Lisette Gutierrez went to Ponce yeah. and she's helping uh, some of these towns that are really picturesque and we see them all the time. Actually, a lot of people from Ponce came to, to Hawaii back in the early 1900s. And so those are some of the towns in the south. Ponce is known for the coffee uh, plantations and then um, also on the west side, Aguadilla, Rincón. Rincón is... Um, famous for surfing, and um, so people from Rincón have to drive about an hour to the closest town to get um, maybe cash, because the ATMs are down. You know, we get our cash through ATM or we charge. Well, how do you get cash without an ATM? You have to go to the actual bank and, to, and go And the banks like, are open to give you cash. It's like the good old days, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose so. <laughs> if they're good. Um, but it will be kind of hard if you are uh, used to living in the 21st century and you got to go back to 1900. It's, yeah. it's a shock, major shock everywhere. Um, my little niece, um, they live in Trincon, which is on the west, and my little niece has asthma, and they had to go to three hospitals in Aguadilla, which is a 45-minute drive, and to find a hospital that could help her. And, uh, and this, in the meantime, my brother is um, waiting to get gas for like an eight-hour wait, and that's improving um, the wait for gas lines, but there's still lines for the bank and the supermarkets are not shelved. Like here, we have food, you know, you just go and get what you need. Uh, it's a little bit more struggling there. I think that we locally need to think about that because I understand mm. we only have two weeks of food stored here. And, and what, what would we do in a case like that? Exactly. And we have more people. Mm -hmm. No, we don't. Well, the uh, uh, National can... Disaster <laughs> Preparedness Training Center came on Friday and they suggested that where the recommendation had been for seven days before, that is for your household, mm -hmm. now it's 14 days. But I mean, some people would take that to 
maybe four weeks, just to be sure. But anyway, let's go back to Puerto Rico. Um, Puerto Rico has been in the news for the past few years about its finances. Yes. And that means, ultimately, that means infrastructure. Yeah? Yes, yes. So Puerto Rico has, has economic problems. They do. Uh, and it has bills it can't pay. And last time I looked, it was something like $80 billion mm -hmm. uh, unpaid liabilities. And, you know, territories and states can't file bankruptcy. But if they could, Puerto Rico would be filing bankruptcy mm -hmm. already. So this has had, I'm sure, a profound effect on the way Puerto Rico worked and operated, the way people saw their homeland and lived in their homeland be before this, this storm ever happened. Mm -hmm. Can you describe that? Uh, well, um, about the financial crisis that was before, Maria, yes, it did exist. And I think that the problem is that um, they don't have too many options. They are not a state, so they can't get the regular help that a state could get. And um, they still have to pay taxes. In fact, they pay higher taxes than, than we do here in Oahu, and some of their prices are very similar. Um, I guess that the difference is they grow more their food. That's different from us. We bring everything almost, right, um, shipped to us. But there you'll find um, fresher food that's grown, produced there. It's an agricultural um, area for Rico. Yes, there is. It's such a, a larger island than Oahu, but smaller than um, well, Hawaii Island. Yeah. Um, but they did have a problem, and I think that I'm not uh, I'm not super knowledgeable about this, but I know that the Jones Act had something to do with that, where the Jones Act, you cannot receive unless it's from a, a U.S. Yeah, port. That's the right? American so, ship. There's a lot of detail yes. to an American so, ship. And if, if the, it's not an American ship, then you, they can't land in Puerto mm -hmm, Rico. Mm -hmm. and, so and that so was, there was one a of the waiver things. recently with, with the storm. Yes. But it's a temporary waiver. It's very temporary. And, and, and yeah. so forth. But that did um, affect the economy. Yeah. And so, um, and then, you know, there is the maintenance Jones of the infrastructure. Jones affected the economy before. As a matter of yes. fact, we had a show a couple of years ago with members of the legislature in Puerto Rico and mm -hmm. San Juan uh, about the effect of the Jones. They, and they were effectively making resolutions to mm -hmm. petition Congress to give them relief from the Jones Act. I don't think that happened. And it no. didn't. The it Republicans didn't. It's really, didn't. really tragic. And, yeah. you know, of course, it will be tragic for Hawaii, too when we get into the same situation, and we may do that just and very we, and thing. And just to let you know, those other islands, the independent islands, Dom Dominica, for uh -huh. instance. Dominican Republic. Uh -huh. Not the Republic, not oh. Dominican Republic. Oh, Dominica. Dominica. Yes, yes, yes. Which is uh, independent. They had ships come from China and mm -hmm. France and all kind of places that couldn't go to Puerto yeah. Rico to bring mm -hmm. them relief. Yeah. yeah. So. But there's been a, a waiver of it. I'm not sure that. No, the, I meant, but that, immediately. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, it took a while to get the waiver Reverse. going. Yes. Which is really one Whatever. of those tragedies. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, we can take a break now, Nancy. But when we come back, I'd like to talk to you about how the people in Puerto Rico, two observation friends and family you've talked mm -hmm. to, the doctor who was your classmate there, and that's uh, Lisette uh, Guterres. Yes. Um, how they feel about what happened here? What's their state of mind? Mm -hmm and also how they feel about the United States government mm -hmm. and the relief efforts that have reached or not reached them after this storm. We'll be right back mm -hmm. after this. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. Ethan Allen, host of Likeable Science on Think Tech Hawaii. Every Friday afternoon at 2 p.m., I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science, where we'll dig into science, dig into the meat of science, dig into the joy and delight of science. We'll discover why science is indeed fun, why science is interesting, why people should care about science, and care about the research that's being done out there. It's all great, it's all entertaining, it's all educational, so I hope you'll join me for Likeable Science.
Okay, we're live. We're back. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Community Matters here on Think Tech. And with my co-host, uh, Marsha Joyner, we're talking to our special guest, Nancy Wizard, who is with the Puerto Rican uh, Heritage Society here in Hawaii. And she is Puerto Rican, and she has friends and family she talks to, and she follows what's going on in Puerto Rico since the storm. So one of the things, you know, we've seen the devastation. We know the place is really wrecked. And we know it must be even more wrecked because it was economically, because it was in trouble before, big trouble. So now here we are. It's like devastation at every level, <laughs> uh, including medical. You know? yes. So <clears throat> how do people feel about the support? How, about, how do people feel in generally? Are they up? Are they down? Are they sideways? What are they telling you? Well, OK, so there is, um, there's us that are watching from afar. And so it, it can be a little hurtful. Um, hurtful? Yes. You know, there's a little bit of resentment that there is. It, it took a long time for um, our president to even acknowledge that there was devastation, a crisis, humanitarian crisis. And um, so, um, but, you know, trying to keep things um, positive, just focusing on helping uh, the people of Puerto Rico, which are a reminder that it, they are U.S. citizens. Um, my grandpa did serve in the Second World War, and, and I always will ask him as a little girl, why did you do that? Why didn't you go to the first one? You know, all in order. And um, <laughs> he would say, I wasn't alive, but I did it, so we have freedom. And so we are, while we are very patriotic about being Puerto Rican, we also have, um, we are U.S. citizens, and we are also proud to be Americans. And so that, that hurts. Um, but how do the people in Puerto Rico feel? Well, they don't have time to be complaining about, about you know, the treatment. Um, they are just trying to pick up where they left and just trying to rebuild from there. Um, there have been a couple of things that have been you know, done incorrectly. And I'm a teacher. And <laughs> um, well, as a child, I was told not to throw things. So you well, know, you're talking about um, the paper towels. Yes, <laughs> yes. Um, that it's a. Uh, um, so what did I do when I first saw that? I, I did get a little bit irritated, but um, but what can you do? You have to laugh sometimes, just at crazy, absurd things you're that very, happen. You're very tolerant, Nancy. Yes, there are others I, who are I'm much a, more I'm angry a teacher. about it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you have to. You you. You shake your head, right? And you go, oh, gosh, you know, that's terrible. Um, the delay on the response was, uh, to me personally, I thought it was, it just took a long time. I'm glad that he did respond and that, that so many people didn't know that Puerto Ricans are U.S. citizens. So something good came out of this. <laughs> um, uh, that he did make the attempt to go visit Puerto Rico, and uh, I was glad that Puerto Ricans didn't, they were not filmed disrespecting um, the, the head of state or the president, right? Because um, then that will look negative. You don't have yeah, to yeah. get at that same level. So I'm glad, even if the audience, I feel that was maybe um, chosen to be there in maybe that group. Maybe so, yeah, yeah, I would expect uh, that. And, and yeah. now she won't say it, but I will. <laughs> say it, Marsha. The racism, pure, unadulterated racism. It took, what, five minutes to lift the Jones Act to get ships into Houston, 10 minutes to get them into Florida, and what, a week or so? I mean, what else can you say? When those people look like it's this— It's a presidential decision. Presidential it's a stroke decision. of a pen, yes, like that. just like that. And when they look like this and they speak a different language, eh, what, let them, they're out there, in a, what do you say, on an island in the ocean, a big ocean. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then he didn't even know— he said he met with the president of the Virgin Islands. He didn't know that he's the president of the Virgin Islands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what can I say? What can I say? <laughs> so, well, I mean, it's just, I mean, if you look at the future of Puerto Rico mm -hmm. before the storm hit, um, you would say, well, they got a lot of economic troubles. And, uh, you know, there was a time when statehood was a big discussion. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's not so much a discussion anymore. Oh. Well, they did. They have voted about two or three times. Again, I got to check. To my say they want facts. statehood. Yes, they have voted for statehood. But it's Congress's statehood, turn. But it's um, you know, it's like we want to come to your house, but are you going to accept us into your home? You know, so it's uh, more now. It's not on the hands of the Puerto Ricans. It's more 
like you said, Congress. And the Puerto Ricans have already made official statements, right. governmental expressions, mm -hmm. it's that like they want to be included in the, in the United States as a state. That would be the 51st state. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like adopting this child that has many problems already. Do you want to accept the child with the, you know, financial crisis or, you know, so, yeah. that, so it feels like they're being used as well. Yeah. Um, because when the, when the focus was on the communism and the threat of Cuba being so close, then yes, Puerto Rico is important. And, uh, you know, there's just so many political <laughs> things that we can get into. Yes. Now, uh, you know, seriously, this, I do not understand when the pharmaceuticals are making so much money and you've got pharmaceutical factories mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico. Yes. So you so used to have. Oh, uh, yeah. So why is it that they're making so much money, but it doesn't trickle down to the economy mm -hmm. in Puerto Rico? I, I know you can't answer that, but that's one of those big elephants in the room. Well, I think, you know, the, the biggest elephant right now is how those factories are going to come back online and whether they're going to come back online. If you were selecting a place for your pharmaceutical factory, you'd want a place which had roads, <laughs> Water, food, <laughs> electricity, <laughs> infrastructure, yeah. you know, and you wouldn't want a place with an $80 billion. Actually, it'll be a lot more later than it is $80 billion yeah. now mm -hmm. because the cost of rebuilding is going to be huge, and I want to talk to you about how that's going to be done. But, but, but if you were a pharmaceutical or any factory coming to Puerto Rico, participating in the economy, offer jobs and all that, you'd have certain basic, you know, baseline requirements, and they don't have them. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what you have is an economy that's really blown up, yeah. and, 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 and you have an infrastructure that's blown up. So where do you start? Do people talk about this? Where do you start rebuilding? In, in a way, it's good to have to rebuild because you rebuild better, mm -hmm. and you rebuild newer, and you yes. have more modern thoughts and ideas mm -hmm. and, you know, approaches to solving problems, but it costs a lot of money. Somebody has got to have the political will and the capital to do it. So what's the discussion, Nancy? Uh, well, it's going to, right now, I think that they're just focusing on the present and, uh, you know, just taking one day at a time. Um, it's going to be a long, a long road to recovery. And uh, I'm not even talking about the financial. Uh, I don't know how it's going to happen. I think that we need everybody's help. Um, and uh, the pharmaceuticals, I'm not sure if they're even going to be going there, but the, uh, the, the history is that they will go and they don't have the same environmental laws that they have to follow in a state. Well, so, so they do take advantage, right, mm -hmm. so they do take advantage of the island and harm the island, but um, I think that we just have to focus on the, the recovery, providing oxygen, uh, the generators, you know, um, reestablishing the, the energy. Yeah. One day at a time. At least yeah. hospitals, yes. Now, you had a, a fundraiser yesterday, yes. gigantic. Tell me, do you know how much you raised yesterday? Do you have any well, idea? I quickly added everything in case you asked me that, and actually we did, we did pretty well. Um, uh, we raised $50 in cash, but that added to 1,083, um, no, 1,033 in cash, checks, 1,083, uh, 1, and then we also had about 400 in charges. We had wireless to make it easy for people to make donations. So um, so we did about uh, almost 1,500, a little yeah. short, which more, doesn't look like a lot, but like I said, a little grain of sand at a time we're going and to. It was, it was at McCoy Pavilion, and mm -hmm. it was gigantic. I, mm -hmm. I thought everybody on the island was there. It was, it was more than just the Puerto Rican community. Oh, yes. Oh, it was, yes. So we not only raise for Puerto Rico, but uh, we also are going to, um, people could also donate and make it for Mexico, for the earthquake that oh, um, sure. that affected some areas in Mexico, uh, yeah. Chiapas, Oaxaca. Yeah. And so, so if you're Mexican, you're going to want to support Mexico. And some people just said split it. So we took all of that um, down. And so at the time of dividing the funds, we're going to take that in consideration and make sure that we allocate the funds where so the people want it. So who send we, the money to? Um, so we chose, we, for Mexico, we chose two, um, 
two organizations, Global Giving and International Community Foundation. And so I am not Mexican, and so, um, but I did my research and I wanted to make sure that people are actually getting help. And so they got a four out of four rating on the um, charity organization, um, mm -hmm. I guess, grades. Mm -hmm. And then for Puerto Rico, um, um, we were selling t-shirts and 100% of uh, the profit of those t-shirts or that sales is gonna help Dr. Lisette Gutierrez, who is my classmate, and she's helping, she's going to the hospitals, she even helped the nuns in a convent. Um, shelters didn't have medication or supplies, so she's helping them. And then also for people who didn't wanna give to, um, because she has a PayPal, Dr. Gutierrez, uh, the other option was Hurricane Maria Recovery Fund, and that one you can find it online. And so that one also helps on uh, different. Now, can things. people still donate? Yes, yes, I'll be happy and to. And can you give us the contact? Sure, um, so we have. Um, is there a website? There is some websites I can give them to you, but um, if you Google Hurricane Maria Community Recovery Fund, you'll see it, it has a, a flag, a uh, Puerto Rico flag. I can show you, I don't know if, if this will be too, um, glossy for the TV, but um, it looks like this. Not sure if you can see, um, but that's what, that's the, website, what the website looks the website like. The website looks like this, yes. And we yeah. had this printed in case people wanted to see and learn more about it. Um, and then Dr. Lisette Gutierrez, if you want, she started with Doctoras Boricuas, which means woman doctors. Boricua is the name of Borinquen. Puerto Rico is the native name. So. Um, the native name of Puerto Rico. So Doctoras Boricuas is uh, another way that you can Google and help mm -hmm. that group. And there are doctors that are going further than San Juan or where the president visited. Yeah. Yeah. One last question, yes. Nancy, and that is, uh, I worry about the future of Puerto Rico. I worry about uh, getting its economic act together. It hasn't received a lot of money from the United mm -hmm. States. Um, capital concentrations, those, those who might contribute or make big loans for the reconstruction, they haven't really appeared yet. Uh, so yeah, they're trying to get oxygen and food and water, but, but the, the big effort has not really yet begun. At the same time, at the same time, I read that 10,000 people like per day mm -hmm. are leaving. There are 3.4 mm -hmm. million, but 10,000 a day are leaving because they don't have jobs, they don't have anything. They're American citizens, they can, they can fly to Miami in no mm -hmm. time. Uh, and they can get a job there. Yes. So why stay in Puerto Rico? What do you think is going to happen with that? Well, that makes the recovery harder in a way because uh, the young and able are leaving. But um, <laughs> um, I think that we have to make sure that we keep the hope. And a lot of people don't want to leave. They want to really try. Um, they love Puerto Rico. Family is really important. Um, I think that... Uh, for people like me who have been living abroad, you know, in the United States for a while, we just want to make sure that people don't forget. And so we're just going to be that pesky fly reminding <laughs> you we're Puerto Rico. And so I think that's important and that we do our little bits. It didn't sound like we did so much, but it doesn't matter. It was something more than we had before. Yeah. And so instead of uh, worrying, because that's not going to be positive and it's not going to help, I think that we just got to make sure that we all help, whether you are Puerto Rican or not, and um, that we have the hope. Uh, well, just yeah. keep that hope going. Marsha, it's time to close. So why okay, don't you make a at, closing at, Look at brief. your crowd. Yesterday, you did raise awareness, and I think all of Hawaii was aware. And so we look forward to having you back and seeing how the progress goes in Puerto Rico. Thank and so thank much. you so much for being here. Thank you, Marsha. As always, thank you so much. We love you. Thank you, Thank Nancy. You. Thank you. Aloha. <laughs>